Well, welcome to this talk. Now, in the last video, we looked at this data from uh, Dr. Murakami in Japan. And, and we, what we found was there was a big difference in the, uh, the death rates here in the vaccinated compared to the death rates in the unvaccinated. And this went on for 120, 240, up to really pretty well a year, but certainly significant for over a nine month period of time. Now, what I want to do in this video is look at the paper that is published. Uh, now, it doesn't contain all the quantitative data, unfortunately, but it does contain some pretty interesting stuff. This is the paper here, proper peer reviewed uh, publication. Uh, from him and some other co-authors uh, in Japan. Professionally translated clearly and uh, very easy to read in normal sort of journal format uh, English. Um, now, um, let's look at what this is saying. Um, this article is saying significant increase in excess deaths after repeated COVID-19 vaccinations in Japan. So definitely more deaths in the group that had been vaccinated on a study of 18 million people, this is pretty convincing, massively significant research. Now, um, although Japan recorded the world's highest COVID-19 messenger RNA ribonucleic acid vaccination doses per capita, so three in, in Japan, 3.3 doses on average per capita. But some people had none and some people had up to eight. <laughs> I mean... I shouldn't laugh. I mean, this vaccine's so effective, you need eight doses, I don't think. Just utterly preposterous. But there you go. The average dose per capita of Japan, 3.3 million. So they've got lots and lots of data to go on from the Japanese situation. And it looks like they can get data in Japan comparing the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated, which, of course, in the United Kingdom, we're not allowed. That's for the grown-ups, not for riff-raffy people like me or you or our leading statisticians and doctors and pathologists that are just waiting to examine this data. No, 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 no. Anyway, COVID-19 cases and deaths exploded after the emergence of Omicron variants. So these vaccines, basically in Omicron, are just, just about useless. So despite more than 80% of the population being fully vaccinated, Omicron just exploded in Japan. That's how useless at preventing infection these vaccines were. Still caused lots of side effects, and we're arguing here that it caused excess deaths, but didn't really do much good. In fact, arguably did a lot of harm, as we'll see. So this vaccine rollout, followed by a significant increase in excess deaths in 2020 and 2023. Now, there was a time where we could go for the Office of National Health Improvements and Disparity in the UK and just look up the excess deaths. Uh, but they scrubbed that probably about 18 months ago now. Um, who knows, there might have been something there that was embarrassing. So that data was readily available. We followed it for a long period of time. There was excess deaths in the UK and then it just went. No longer published. Rather disappointing from the Office for Health Improvements and Disparity. If anyone from there is watching, please start publishing again. We would like to know. It also broke it down by cause of death. Now that data is not there anymore in the United Kingdom. Um, maybe part of our freedom of speech problems in the UK. We're not allowed to speak about these things. Right. But anyway, in Japan they are. Although several hypotheses have been exposed to, uh, proposed to explain the phenomena of excess deaths in 2022 and 2023, which were significant, as we've seen, in the vaccinated group, uh, the truth remains to be established. Sufficient, uh, because sufficient studies and data disclosures have not been conducted to adequately investigate the possible contribution of mRNA vaccines. So even in Japan, they're still struggling for um, full data uh, release, as indeed we are in the UK. The causes uh, of the excess deaths, not only from COVID-19, but also other factors after repeated mRNA vaccines must be elucidated. So... After COVID vaccines, people are dying more from other diseases as well. Given this could provide valuable information to help combat future infectious disease uh, outbreaks, of course. Now, Japan, 2022 to 2023, excess deaths per million, more than 1,400 um, excess deaths uh, per year per million. 
Three times higher than the United States, and that was bad enough. More higher. Of course, in the United States, a much lower proportion of the vaccine, uh, the, the population, fortunately, took the COVID vaccine, a much lower proportion. And, and less doses than in Japan as well. COVID-19 deaths in Japan accounted for only 10% of these excess deaths. So 1,400, I mean, the population of Japan is about 80 million or something, isn't it? So we'd have to times that by 80 to get the number. So I guess we're looking at 100,000 excess deaths in Japan. But for, for every 1,400 excess deaths, 140 were COVID-related. And in fact, we could argue that it was probably much less than that. So at least 90% of these excess deaths are not attributable to COVID, even with generous definitions of COVID deaths. So 90% of people are dying from something else. Another hypothesised cause of the excess deaths is uh, various adverse reactions to COVID-19 vaccinations, of course. Now, as of 18th of November 2024, so that's a while back now, isn't it? Long time back now, getting on, I don't know, 10 months or what is it now? Anyway, a long, long time back. Um, 10 months or something, 11, nine months or something. After COVID-19 vaccination, government has pay, paid 8,432 payouts for vaccine injury. So the government of Japan has admitted that people are hurt by the vaccine, injured by the vaccine enough, 8,432 times. So despite the Japanese government paying out 8,432 times for COVID vaccine damage, our government in the UK still thinks that these vaccines are acceptable for certain age groups. It's preposterous. This is clearly dangerous. 8,432 payouts in Japan for COVID vaccines and 903 deaths. So 903 deaths attributed to the COVID vaccine with sufficient evidence to get the payout in the Japanese situation. Uh, rather more difficult in my country. But 903 deaths admitted to be caused by the COVID vaccines. And yet they haven't been banned. This is utterly ridiculous. This is very convincing data. Numbers are still increasing. So more people are getting injured. More people are still dying already greatly exceeds the number of injuries and deaths for which payments were made after all of the vaccines in the last 47 years speaks for itself doesn't it many injuries and deaths in the young population for example a 14 year old girl died there they were told to vaccinate to prevent granny or whatever the japanese equivalent of that was preposterous that granny had had the vaccines the vaccines were so ineffective that they then said young people need to be vaccinated to protect these people that are supposed to be protected by the vaccine. You couldn't make it up. If the vaccines weren't effective in the older population, how on earth did they think they were going to be effective in the younger population to stop infecting the older population who were supposed to be protected by the vaccines? It's, it's, like, it's like a farce, isn't it? It's just ridiculous. Totally, utterly ridiculous. This policy contradicts an early study, April, as, as actually as early as August 2021. It wasn't published in peer review till somewhat after that, but showing that vaccines did not reduce the viral load of infective individual, infected individuals. In other words, if granddaughter had got infected after vaccination, the amount of viruses they were breathing out would just be the same, whether they were vaccinated or not. Therefore, granddaughter's risk to granny would be the same whether she was vaccinated or not having been told to get vaccinated to protect granny. There was no protection for granny. But in this particular case, the 14-year-old died, as did many other young people in the Japanese data. In medicine, we give a treatment for the benefit of the individual. We don't treat someone for the benefit of someone else. Where did this idea come from? Vaccinate to protect granny. Part of the international racket, in my view. Adverse reactions reported, as you would expect, myocarditis, pericarditis, blood clotting, autoimmune diseases linked to lipid nanoparticles. So in Japan, they're pretty clear it's the lipid nanoparticles themselves that are causing problems, as well as the mRNA producing the spike protein and excess spike protein generated by the mRNA. So they're saying it's both. They're saying it's these lipid nanoparticles 
and the so the lipid nanoparticles themselves made from the lipids and the uh, the RNA inside them both of course that's what gives rise to the spikes um, but but both dangerous now deaths from cancer related to estrogen receptors such as leukemia breast pancreatic lip oral pharyngeal ovarian and uterine cancers have also increased since the population-wide administration of mRNA vaccines. Now, this is the data that we've been fearing, to be quite honest. We've suspected for a long time mRNA vaccines are going to increase a range of cancers. We, we got that from Professor Dalgleish. Well, must be getting on for two, two three years ago now. Um, but here, it's now published in this publication that uh, this is, is happening. In, in the peer-reviewed literature. Um, so we know from this data here that a lot of the excess deaths are occurring, if I get the right one, uh, are occurring nine, uh, 120, 240 days after the vaccine. Um, the myocarditis and things, of course, occur much earlier, but these excess deaths occurring for... 120, 240 days, cancers could be delayed for years, decades even. Uh, if this is true, this Japanese paper is correct, it means I might die of this if there's a delay. Cancer induced by mRNA vaccines, I was told, were safe and effective. And at the time, was naive enough to believe because I thought the chief medical officers and chief scientific officers knew what they were talking about and would err on the side of caution to protect me. As we've said, the days of deference are gone. So cancers have increased since population-wide administration of mRNA vaccines. Spike protein... SARS-CoV-2 is known to bind to estrogen receptors. These are located in the nucleus of the cell and uh, includes nuclear localization signal. In other words, it channels it down to the nucleus of the cell, uh, which makes it more likely to be conveyed to the nucleus. And of course, the DNA is in the nucleus and uh, cancer is a mutation in that DNA. Sadly, it makes a lot of cytological pathophysiological sense. Another hypothesis involves chronic infection caused by immunosuppression after repeated vaccination. So the more COVID vaccines you get, the more likely you are to get COVID. Indeed, recent studies have reported an increase in spike protein, more immunoglobulin, uh, immunoglobulin 4, um, and more regulatory T cells, which of course are the cells which, which inhibit the uh, immune response. And these are often... Uh, what what tends to happen here is the the virus is cleared from the uh, from the lungs. Typically, can take a while. It'll be slower in people that are vaccinated, presumably, but in people that are vaccinated, because they become immunosuppressed as a result of the vaccine, the virus can live in and in their guts for well, we don't know months, potentially years. And the reason we know this is because we uh, in in Japan at least wastewater monitoring monitoring data supports the claim. So the finding. The, uh, the spike protein in and uh, and the, the virus indeed the, 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 the SARS coronavirus 2 in the sewage water in Japan because it's not being cleared from the gastrointestinal tract because the ability of the body to clear the virus is inhibited by the vaccine that is the thinking from the Japanese researchers they also quote, quote Robert Redfield who of course was director of the Centers for Disease Control the the, uh, <clears throat> the benefit to the 30-year-old firefighter, I don't see the benefit in the vaccine, he says. There's prolonged production or uh, impact or negative consequences from spike protein in some people that get the mRNA vaccine. Yep. Uh, the concerns related to the mRNA lipid nanoparticle formulation evidently need to be taken seriously. And publicly, I would add. 
Thus, uh, it is imperative to elucidate the effects of population-wide COVID-19 vaccination as they're doing in Japan, finding excess deaths in the vaccinated group. Japanese health authorities have been hesitant to provide data, but they have obviously got it for 18 million people, which is brilliant. Uh, it was revealed that the vaccines were as susceptible sorry, the, the vaccinated were as susceptible or even more susceptible to COVID-19 infection than were the unvaccinated. In other words, why did we bother, at least in the later stages of the vaccination programme? So, um, interesting paper. Read it for yourself. All completely intelligible, as I say, properly translated. But uh, this is the alarming graph um, showing the increase in deaths. And um, as we say... So that, that's what we know already. Um, we're going to need much longer term data to know about the excess deaths from uh, cancer. Japanese data sh clearly showing excess deaths up to nine months in the vaccinated, but not in the unvaccinated group. Given that this data is now available, any regulator that is not taking full cognizance of this in my view, should be sacked and probably punished. Uh, on that note of uh, forlorn hope, thank you for watching.